Most of the men who went away to war returned by the millions sooner than most people had expected. Separation centers worked overtime, processing three quarters of a million men each month. In less than a year, the armed forces returned more than 12 million young men to civilian life. The GI Bill, with its financial and educational benefits, gave millions of veterans a chance to advance into the middle class. A great many seized the opportunity. Most veterans were anxious to put the war behind them. They collected $3 billion in mustering out pay and went looking for civilian jobs. At the employment offices, veterans got preferential treatment. They were the nation's heroes, after all. And there were low-cost home loans for veterans and low-interest loans to help them buy a farm or start a business. And many did just that. 2,230,000 veterans went to college on the GI Bill. For these pragmatic children of the Depression, a college degree was a ticket to the affluent middle class. It had been a costly war, almost 300,000 Americans dead. More than 670,000 were wounded, many of them permanently disabled. On the home front, one last bond drive. At the Roosevelt Home in Hyde Park, the War Activities Committee of the Motion Picture Industry stages a bond rally where Colonel James Devereaux, hero of Wake Island, starts the ball rolling. Merle Oberon, Universal Screen Star, registered applications for Roosevelt bonds, and the victory loan is off to a flying start. The reconversion of war plants to peacetime pursuits is going ahead at full speed, and once more the automobile factories are humming as huge stamping presses form the bodies of the first automobiles produced since the spring of 1942. Prices on these 1946 models will be slightly higher, but with all priorities lifted, America will be on wheels once more. At the huge Willow Run factory in Michigan, where warplanes were made, the first new cars of the Kaiser Fraser Company are designed and built. The first models are handmade and are the forerunners of hundreds of thousands which will be turned out under assembly line methods. Mr. Kaiser produced hundreds of Liberty transport ships for the Allied war effort. Now he and Mr. Frazier present their peacetime product. The six-cylinder Kaiser car features front-wheel drive. It had been a long, long time since Americans had been free to buy anything they wanted, but now the war was over. Cars, radios, cordless electric irons, Consumer goods of all kinds were coming off the assembly lines. The Great Depression was just a memory. Most Americans had prospered during the war. They had money now, and they were eager to spend it. Millions of returning veterans got married. That created a demand for new houses and new kitchen appliances. Rationing had ended, food was plentiful. Overnight, it seemed, traditionally frugal Americans became conspicuous consumers. Nylons filled the shop windows, and real rubber tires rolled out of the factories for the new cars coming off the reconverted assembly lines. Americans climbed back into their automobiles. With light hearts and no road maps, they headed off into a materialistic world of the future, never to return. <laughs> 